he's not biting him yet. Um. See at the top right corner, I have a little Molly I purchased off PetSmart, a freshwater Molly that I decide to add to my reef tank. Now, one thing is that I did do a little bit of research, of course, before I buy any fish, and you should too, um, on um, adding mollies to a saltwater tank. Um, mollies are brackish fish. They have special organs where they could easily, I wouldn't say easy, but they could switch from freshwater to saltwater and everything in between. There is basically a debate between whether you should add a molly with the plop and drop method when you're switching it from fresh to salt or whether you should slowly drip acclimate and me being fairly lazy and also seeing the results online that people most people online actually say they have more success with the plop and drop method than drip acclimating with a molly and I decided to go with the plop and drop method so I'm right now temperature acclimating it and as you can see at the top and then eventually I just opened the bag, scooped them up in the net and put them in the reef tank. And I'm just going to tell you how it goes, uh, my experience. He did fine in the saltwater tank actually. Uh, he definitely was stressed out when I introduced him to the saltwater tank with the plop and drop method. But within maybe a day or two, he got used to it. Now, another thing to mention is that since it is a freshwater molly, it did have to get used to the increased flow in the tank. Uh, I think this is probably going to be something you're also going to notice. Saltwater tanks have much more flow than uh, freshwater, so it takes a little while for the molly to get used to this. But other than that, I didn't actually have any problems with um, adding the freshwater molly straight to salt water without any type of drip acclimation or anything like that but why would I even want to add a freshwater molly to a salt water tank I mean there's a ton of beautiful fish in the salt water hobby and it would be much easier to uh, set up a freshwater tank to add a molly than have a salt water tank and add a molly especially with the limited resources and space in a nano tank well the reason is uh, freshwater mollies are actually great algae eaters and there's not many or really if any saltwater fish that are suitable for nano tanks that eat algae and freshwater molly is a great algae eater it's a small fish so it's fairly suitable for nano tanks and they're pretty as well I mean they look good in a saltwater tank but either way, the main reason I got this molly was because it's probably my best bet at an algae eating fish in such a small system. Unfortunately though, this didn't work out. Not because the molly died, not because it wasn't compatible in salt water, not because it didn't eat algae, but because my clownfish is a big bully. Um, my clownfish definitely beat up this molly. Um, I saw he got a little bit of damage to his lip, his fins were nipped. Um, I figured I left them there together for maybe a week, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, the fin damage was pretty minor, the molly actually recovered from the fin damage quite quickly. I mean, he'd have a chunk out, and then within a few days you could see the fin recovering. So I thought maybe the aggression would work itself out. But after I saw the lip damage, I figured that it's probably too much and I probably shouldn't uh, keep that fish in there. Especially seeing uh, fish get beat up that badly. I mean, a little bit of nitpicking here and there is usually tolerable for a fish. Um, especially some more aggressive tanks. Some people have fish fighting all the time. But the small was getting beat up a little too much for my liking. And since it is a molly and I have multiple aquariums, I ended up adding it to my freshwater tank. To say the least, this molly went through a lot. I plop and dropped him from freshwater to saltwater and he had to adapt to that. And now I have him getting beat up in the reef tank and then I pulled him out with a net and I dropped him into my 180 gallon freshwater tank. Straight, no acclimation again. And well, how did that go? 
Well, he was perfectly fine again. Um, he adapted well. And I still have that molly in my freshwater tank to this day. And he's actually grown quite a bit. And he poops quite a bit as well. It does show that the pop and drop method, even though it doesn't sound nice, it actually sounds pretty cool because you're not adapting it to the water. It actually works really well and might be the best method for adding a molly if you want to switch it from freshwater to salt water or salt water to freshwater. I mean, I've put this molly through the plop and drop method twice, and in both cases, it survived and is currently thriving. So, if I was to buy molly, or if you're interested in getting a molly and adding it to a salt water tank, I definitely recommend. If you are interested in getting a little algae eating fish for your smaller aquariums that look nice, the mollies actually come in many different colors. As you can see, this is an orange molly, there's some Dalmatian mollies which are black and white, and I forgot the name of the other one, but there's also completely black mollies that look really nice. I mean, and you can see in the video how the contrast with my orange molly and my black clownfish looks really nice. Now I can imagine someone owning a reef tank with maybe an orange clownfish, which is much more common, and a black molly, which would be a really sick combo. And the molly is going to help you eat algae, um, as an algae eating fish in a nano, which is pretty hard to come across for a reef tank. Hopefully this helped you guys out if you were interested in getting a saltwater molly or looking for an algae eating fish for a nano. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you like the content shown here.